Right now on to Kate. So let's have a let's tell you a little bit bit more about Kate. Um, we've known Kate for a long time at B4. She's she's been a great supporter of the B4 community, um, and uh, she's um, certainly helping us through these difficult times. Um, Kate founded Coconut in well, she's actually a strategic communications consultant, founder of Coconut PR, and a commentator. You might have seen uh, Kate on BBC TV the other night on the travel industry for BBC Radio and Television. She founded Coconut in 2015 after nine years helping one of Oxford's great travel startups make a name for itself and secure a buyout by the world's largest travel site. Prior to that, she spent years in hospitality operations from the wonders of waitressing to running one of the city's most renowned independent restaurants. A communications and marketing all-rounder, Kate specialises in helping businesses grow through a tailored combination of PR, social media, email marketing and content creation. From strategic input to hands-on execution, she and her small team provide PR and communication support to clients across Oxfordshire and further afield. So it's enough for me. I'll hand over to our expert, Kate. Good morning, Kate. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good Hello, afternoon. everybody. Um, Thank you for joining. Um, I'd like to spend the next 20 to 30 minutes um, trying to prove some worth in what Richard just said about me um, and to make you feel more comfortable and more confident in your customer, customer communications at this time. Um, hoping that you'll go away feeling a little inspired, have some tips and tricks. And uh, as Richard said, if you have any questions um, that you don't want to ask whilst we're going or that I can't ask right at the end, um, come and chat in the Google Hangout afterwards. So are we good to go? I think we are. Okay. Um, I'll mic out, so the is yours. Okay. So let's start with the why. Um, why you need to keep talking to your customers in these times. We sort my cursor out. Oh, and turn my phone off to forgive the occasional technical hitch. Um, I imagine that if you haven't been spinning plates for a while, you probably are spinning many, many now, and you may even be sweeping up an awful lot of pieces. Um, it's very easy to fall into the negative, um, and I don't want you to think that communicating with your customers is another headache for you to um, have to pick up and handle as you deal with everything else that's going on. But what I would like to instill is that it really is vital to keep talking to your customers during these times because you need to be looking ahead to beyond. So let's think about where we're going to be when coronavirus, COVID-19 has done what it needs to do and is um, out of the way and we can get back to a sense of new normality. There really is no better time to be um, talking to your customers right now and to be maintaining your company brand storytelling. You definitely need to be clear about what it is you can contribute at the moment um, and what you as a business can achieve from that contribution. Um, yes, your story is absolutely going to change. Um, if there's a business out there whose story doesn't change in this time, um, it will be um, unusual. Your story is going to change because it's quite likely the way you deliver your business, your product, your service, your offering is going to change. Your product might change, the way you deliver it might change. Um, but there's always a story. The trick is to make that story relevant, sensitive and relatable and to provide something that as a business adds value and is consistent. Now, all of that sounds really hard work potentially because it's another thing to think about, particularly delivering regular and consistent communications. But whatever the size of your team, it's about doing whatever you can and ultimately becoming um, uber organized in delivering that content whilst being flexible for the fact that it's going to be everything's going to be a bit fluid for for the time being now's the time to think long not to think short so communicate now and continue continue to communicate now so that you maintain contact with your customers so that your brand continues to have a presence and so that you are there on the other side, ready to rock. 
Um, what can you add to the equation that supports your customers, inspires them, spreads hope, and gives them a little bit more about you uh, and what you're doing in this time so that they feel a little bit more of a longing and a nurture and a, a loyalty for your, you and your company. Those are really the key reasons for continuing to communicate with your customers so that they know what to do now as your customer, so that they know what you are doing for them now as a customer. To some extent, the pressures that you're under and how you're having to adapt and change, but so that they can continue to come to you if they need to during the next few weeks or months, and so that you are there front of mind when we're on the other side. Let's talk about the how. If you are thinking that now is the time to launch some hot off the press product or are umming and ahhing about whether to um, promote that gorgeous villa on, in the Caribbean, sell, 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 definitely not. I'm sure you are um, beyond that point now. Um, what I'm sharing with you now in this um, screen that you can see, this is, an, this is a tweet um, from the editor of the FT posted yesterday, um, who had received um, a pitch for these gorgeous new shoes from um, a fashion PR just yesterday. And I think it's, um, it's a really sad example of the fact that the adjustment that's required in your communications and your marketing hasn't quite re reached everybody on the ground yet. So if you're thinking of selling something, don't. Does it mean you can't talk about your business? Absolutely not. It's about um, finding the best way to deliver it. Definitely not selling. It's kind of a good time to go back to basics. So if you already have marketing in place, if you already have customer communications processes, you will have a clear cut idea on who your audience is, where they hang out, which channels they best respond to, how often they're there, and how much they tend to normally interact with you. And that's an amazing base to start from. But now is the time to recognize that with people um, being socially distanced, with people being isolated or self-isolating, and with people being sick, more of your audience, more of your online audience is going to be online more of the time. So that creates, A, it creates an opportunity because theoretically your audience is more present, but it's also an opportunity for you to audit, review what you're doing and to sharpen up what you're doing. So that's a look at all the channels that you have a brand presence on, whether that's social media channels, email, PR, paid channels, um, video channels, wherever your channels are, have a clear list of them, look at them, audit them, review uh, review what it's saying about your brand, review what it's saying about what you're doing right now, and be clear in what you're going to say that it fits the channel, it fits the audience that's hanging out on the channel, and it fits what, it, what they want to hear right now. Which naturally brings us to content. Um, everybody should have a content plan that tells their brand story. Pretty hard to do that in such fluid times, let's recognize that. However, what you can have is a skeleton content plan that includes the basics that you can deliver, the types of content that you can deliver, whether that's topics and themes or formats of content that you can deliver over this time using your existing assets and a slight change of tone, perhaps. Um, I say skeleton plan because you want all of these ideas available to you, but you'll probably find you're having to shift the content plan around quite a lot at the moment, depending on what's going on, what's coming out of the press briefings and what's happening with your business specifically. So you need to have the ideas in place, but you don't necessarily have to have everything scheduled and ready to go. There's going to have to be an element of manual involvement here if you're used to automation. And then there's engagement. It's absolutely the key to social media marketing anyway but if you've never quite made it to being awesome at engagement now's the time to, to rock it and excel at it 
people are online more, they'll be absorbing your content more, they will be wanting to talk more. Now's a good time to talk. And it's about going out there and engaging with the people who choose to engage on the content that you put out there. And also about you going out and supporting other businesses who are um, putting content out there and showing your support for their efforts. And also with people who are asking questions. So if there are, if you're on Twitter, for example, or even if you're on LinkedIn, go and look for hashtags or searches, keyword searches that are relevant to your business that you feel you can comment on. Start engaging with people. There's some really positive, I mean, the best of humanity is coming to light at the moment. Um, there are some fabulous examples of industry groups coming together to help each other through these times. And it's happening on platforms like Facebook groups and Slack. So the engagement opportunities are there but on both a B2B and a B2C um, from a B2C and a B2B perspective. And I've just included some examples here, some of which you may be familiar with. Um, yes, the co-op example is ultimately PR and news. But what, uh, what co-op has done here is that they have recognize their audience. So they've recognized their need primarily, they're going to need more staff. They've recognized a very specific audience of people, and that is the estimated 1 million hospitality workers who could be out of a job very soon, who could actually be very helpful to them on their front line as they increase the need for um, staff. And they have led all their messaging about this job creation project to be focused on those hospitality workers. It's really simple, but it's also really, really smart. Um, draw, with, draw with Rob and Joe Wicks. I am that target audience, and that's why I have found these. So I'm the audience, which is um, I'm a working mom who officially, as of next week, will have her kids at home. I've actually had my kids at home all week, as it is. And um, draw with what Rob. Rob Bidolf is an author and illustrator who on a daily basis is releasing a how-to video, 10 minutes long, that you can pause on how to draw some of the characters from his books. Um, Spot of genius. And as you can see from the lovely example I've included, my seven-year-old is already entranced by this. And I engage with Joe Wicks on a regular basis, and he has been keeping me sane this week. And he goes top of my tree of amazing people for launching PE for Kids next week, nine o'clock every week. Great example of diversification of um, his offering, but also how did I find that? How did he find me? He found me as the audience on Instagram because that's where I hang out. And he knew that because that's, <laughs> as a Joe Wicks fan, that's how he talks to me, his audience. So some examples there of both diversification, but also understanding your audience and picking the right channel for delivering the content and picking the right content for the time. So coming back out of the detail and thinking about your customer comm strategy, I've gone top line here on channels. Now you may well have other channels that you factor into your organization, but I'm just gonna talk about these ones because these are the ones I know best. Now, content is king, full stop. Um, it can continue to be king through COVID-19, whether that is content that you can deliver through your website um, or any of your channels that is relevant to the situation and helps your audience um, be more informed and better, uh, more confident in understanding what's going on using your expertise. It will also be great for SEO. And now is a good time to be thinking about optimizing your website for search so that you're in an amazing position when we get to the other side. Um, also think about your website content because go and look, go and when was the last time you looked at your homepage? <laughs> go and look at your homepage, see what campaign, hero campaigns you're running on it. Are they really relevant right now or are they actually really insensitive? Does your business need to have COVID-19 FAQs for its customers? If it does, have you created them? If you haven't created them, do. If you've created them, but they're hidden in your FAQ, um, go and make them really clear and loud and available on your homepage. And obviously disseminate them through your other channels. Social media, I touched on it a bit beforehand, go and look at your channels check um, i would review right now what it says about your brand in your about sections and your bios i would also consider 
same thing as your website. If you're running hero campaigns anywhere, review them, make sure they're relevant and time sensitive and helpful and not insensitive. And consider posting a pinned post on the channels that it lets you do that, that tells the story of what your business is doing now. So the situation that you're in, how you're dealing with your staff, what, you're, what you've got set up for your customers, how people have got to interact with you differently. Or put all of that in a pinned post so it's a, an easy reference point, either for people coming into your page or for you to be able to point people to. Lots of people have asked me um, if it's okay still to do PR. And the answer is yes. Uh, the, the Twitterverse is a little bit divided on it. I've seen some angst among journalists who are just like, would you stop the sell? Which goes back to what we talked about earlier. And then I've seen lots and lots more journalists saying, please continue to send us content, but please can it be positive? Can it be upbeat? Can it be relevant? Can it be future thinking? And that ties back to everything I've already said, which is the importance of thinking long, not thinking short. How can you help people now? How can you help inspire for the future? What are you doing? in your business to ease the pain either for your staff or for your customers or for your community have you got any amazing staff members who do doing something in their own time to help their communities um, get through this they're all lovely stories whether you're whether they're relevant to your industry media to your local media or in some cases possibly also to national media Email is probably the channel that you communicate most with your core customer base. And I imagine you do that on a fairly regular basis. Um, if you're a B2C brand, then you might be use, you might ordinarily use email as a, a sales mechanism or as a nurture mechanism or as a combination of both, ideally. Um, now's definitely the time to switch to nurture mode. Um, I've seen some really, really lovely examples and I've helped brands deliver some very um, we're here, let's stay together, let's stay connected type messaging where they, whereby at the moment they can't sell holidays, um, they can't sell hotel rooms and they can't sell dinner uh, tables in restaurants. So it's, it's a really fabulous opportunity to not only communicate some of the other things we've talked about, so what you're doing, how you can help and what's going on, but also let's stay in touch. We're here. We'd like to keep you in touch with what we're doing and continue to inspire and offer hope. Um, and we'd like you to continue the interaction back. Paid digital is absolutely worth a review if you've not already done it. Um, yes, review your spend, absolutely uh, review your campaigns and your keyword focus. Um, if you're, if you need to, or are looking to shrink that spend for now, because the conversion on it is likely to be smaller for the time being, think about how you can divert that budget to some of the other areas of your customer communication strategy. No, absolutely nobody wants to be sold to right now. I must give one really good example here from a B4 member of that email scenario. So um, Matt Simmons of TBAT, he sent an email earlier this week that really simply and succinctly talked to businesses about the latest financial reforms that had come from the government in the previous evening's um, uh, press briefing. It was clear it ironed out some of the nuances and it delved into some of the detail in a way that was relevant to businesses. So they'd understood their audience, they'd understood as experts the, the news and they had delivered it in a helpful way to the people who they knew needed it. So loved it. Right, it's really, really easy to bash social media. Um, really, really easy, but now it's time to take advantage of it. As I said, more people online, more of the time. So uh, first basic is if you're not there very often, look at how you can be there a bit more to tell all these lovely stories um, that you're doing. If um, you are already there, maybe it's time to think about how else to use it. 
which could be about using some of the tools it offers to enhance the community sense um, or to deliver your offering in a slightly different way. Um, Facebook pages um, offer this Facebook community element. So if there are people who want to have more of a close knit group um, conversation, you can set those up and keep people um, abreast of things that are relevant to your business or your sector. Um, it's a good way to offer out services or make people aware of additional services that are available. Um, Lucy Eckley and Phil Walsh are doing great, um, are the, the doing a great job anyway of networking, but are now facilitating this virtual networking. So again, B4 members that are working hard to keep the business community going. And then it's about diversification. How can you take your product that you'd normally deliver face-to-face -face and deliver it online? Um, I reckon Zoom must be, um, the demand for Zoom <laughs> as a product must be going through the roof. Um, my kid's cookery teacher is delivering her cookery classes via Zoom as of the weekend. So they're actually really excited about that. If you're a wine merchant, why not run a virtual wine tasting session instead of hosting it um, in the town hall or the pub or wherever it is you were gonna host it? Or do what B4 are doing and participate in these live um, sessions like this and keep your community connected. Ultimately, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So you will already have a bank of image and video assets and um, a really good example of how you can use what you've got existing to today is another B4 member, <laughs> Renee Watson um, of Curiosity Box, who has some fabulous video content to engage kids with STEM activities. And she is using that now to help children understand more about what coronavirus is and understand it in a way that is relevant to them. You can also, um, you're going to have less content that you can say, wouldn't it be great to go here right now? Wouldn't it be great to do this now? Would you like to know more about how we can do this together? And I think what I'm seeing across the board, certainly on social networks, is what I tend to see when we're in emotionally heightened times. And that's an, a great tendency for more naturalness in our behaviour and our communication. Because we've lost the ability to sell, we're having to have more human interactions and conversations. Um, and as we diversify, we need our customers on board to engage with that diversification. So I've been working with a restaurant who is wondering how it can take a fairly high end product to a very everyday type product, but with all the quality still involved. And they just didn't really know where to start. So I said, well, go and talk to your audience. They're engaged already. So they were in a fortunate position in that sense. Go and ask them, go and say, this is what we're thinking about doing. If we did it like this, how would you, how would it best work for you? And they did it, had an amazingly positive response. And within 48 hours, we've got a takeout menu slash drive-by collection option um, up and running. So it's all about shifting how you talk as well as what you do. Um, and then on the future point, uh, I'm going to reference travel because it's it's my home turf, but um, where you have something that you want to sell, I mean, uh, travel, it's, it's an easy one, isn't it? You know, you can find a beautiful image and you say throwback to when I was last here. So that like, in a B2B context, that could be throw throwback to last year's bio where we met x number of customers and picked up x amount of business we are sad that we that the b4 won't be happening the bio won't be happening in june but we're all guns blazing for when it starts again in november and if you're in a travel or a hospitality business it's throwback to when we served this dish when we went to this destination can't wait to be da da da, da. Uh, what would you like to see on the menu in four months time? Where are you hoping to go to, on your next holiday once the borders are back open? And then some of those other points on this slide I've, I've covered already. 
which includes forgetting about the call to action. The call to action is one of those things that we try to write something really subtle and clever in a, uh, using sort of nudge theory to get people to go, yeah, I want to know more about this, click, buy. Now's really not a time to do that, as we've said. If you feel the need or you are absolutely relevantly putting a call to action out there, make sure it's one that's genuinely helpful so that it leads people to more detail, more information, or it leads people to making contact with you if they need to. In case you haven't got it already, what I'm suggesting is that your customer communications are all about nurture. It's about nurturing your existing relationships. It's about staying in touch with your existing communities. It's about nurturing past relationships and prospective relationships in a similar way by demonstrating that you're being thoughtful, you're being sensitive, timely, and that you are going to be there on the other side, able to help them if they need you. So take it as an opportunity, a positive opportunity to inspire, to support and to spread hope in your business networks and in your wider business and amongst your customers. And I think you'll be in a really, really strong position, a stronger position as you can be when all of this is done. So I don't know if we can, if there are questions, I'm just going to look at the other screen now. Um, what I wanted to do now was take questions if we have them or Lorna, do you want us to move across to the Hangout? I can see- If you can move across to the Hangout, that'd be, can you hear me, Kate? Yeah, I can. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for that. It was uh, really informative and I'm sure everybody um, who joined us today will get a lot, an awful lot out of uh, what you've been saying. And we've recorded this so that we can post this out uh, on our social media channels as well. So thank you, Kate. So there's the link um, in the feed about um, the Hangout. If I can just um, round up with a few points, I think we've got a, a few slides to finish off with. And uh, if you can put those up, uh, Keith, if that's possible. So we've got a, a, a talk. We'll be aiming to do one every day. Anybody's interested in doing a talk with B4, please get in contact. Um, through either my LinkedIn or email or give me a call. Um, we've got a daily hangout at one o'clock. Whoever wants to take host of that, then you're more than welcome to do so. Um, and then um, we've got uh, a number of talks coming up next week. Uh, if I can just refer to my slides that have just been sent through to me, if we can't get them on the screen. So we've got Dominic Hare, um, we've got Paul Blackthorne, we've got Simon Gray from GigaClear, Anthony Robinson from Indulgence, uh, boutique Hospitality, Alex Sayers from Exist2. Um, here we go. Um, we've got uh, James White. We've got Diane Wilkinson. Um, we've got uh, Jeanette Cardi Fitness. Um, there's Dom. And then we've also got um, some unusual ones coming up. Uh, a lot of you know, know James, James White on sales. Um, we've got Penny and Nicola from Blake Morgan. Um, and a, an old contact of mine, Sam Ricketts, who's the manager of Shrewsbury Town, um, just trying to get some really different people involved um, just to give us their perspectives and how their businesses are coping. So um, some really varied talks coming up and hopefully we'll, um, we'll have some, uh, some good engagement with those talks. But thank you, everybody. I think we managed to finish just a minute over. Kate, thank you so much for helping us launch a really uh, fantastic insight. Please join Kate in the Hangout now. Thank you very much, everybody. Look forward to seeing you soon.